I think failure teaches you things that you don't learn from success. I think failure gives you an opportunity for self-examination and also gives you a feeling that is very uncomfortable. And that very uncomfortable feeling helps you grow. You just, just do something that's good. Stop saying it's saturated. If you're good, it'll stand out. This idea that, like, oh, it's easy for you to say. Everybody's got these stupid barriers they put in their own head. You gotta resist those goddamn things, because they don't do you any good, and they certainly define the potential for your future in a negative way that's not self-serving, and it's not even real. You know, you, 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 you put this artificial ceiling on the potential for what you're doing. If you hit a wall, Okay, that just means you need to regroup and rethink. It doesn't mean that wall's there, especially when it comes to something like social media or like a, a podcast, something where you're just, you're putting out a piece of art, you're putting out something that you've created. There's no wall as far as like how many people are gonna enjoy it or how far it's gonna go. It's just, it is what it is. And if people don't like it, make it better. If they like it less, fix that. F figure out a way to do it. You can do that. And this this idea that there's no way to get past the starting block today is just ludicrous. It's crazy. And it's just this this poor thinking. And people that are trapped in bad situations, one of the problems is you feel like this is your future. You feel like you're fucked and you can't get out of that. There's no hope. There's no light at the end of the tunnel. There's no rainbow. And, and if you feel like that, that alone can be incredibly defining and limiting. But if you can look at, if you look at yourself objectively and say, okay, I kind of am fucked here. I'm in credit card debt. I'm working in a shitty job. I, I, I don't like what I'm doing, but I have some ideas. I need to feed those fucking ideas. And I, fe I, I need to feed them and water them. And I need to set aside a certain amount of time every day to just try to make those things happen. You can do that. The thing that people that makes people the most sad in life, and I already have a couple of friends my own age who are there, is the regrets. Right? They don't they don't they're not sorry they failed, they're sorry they didn't try. And the mm. funny thing is, there some of them are only fifty and they think, okay, my, my my window to try is already gone, which is wrong too. But folks, you will be so happy. There's so many things that have happened in my life because I I mean, I got my first talk radio show job. I was, a, I was a reporter. I covered this story. There was some big guy showing up at the local radio station. And as I was leaving, I wrote a letter to the program director to say, thanks for having us. And I thought, do I mail this? Do I not mail it? Do I mail it? Do I... And just, you know, I closed my eyes and I mailed it. He called me two days later. He said, you want a job? What if you didn't right. send that letter? It's right. so stupid. The little things that your life can hinge on. Yes. But, but if you don't do them, you don't give fate an opportunity to intervene. I think here's an important thing, too. Failure is important. It is important. I think failure teaches you things that you don't learn from success. I think failure gives you an opportunity for self-examination and also gives you a feeling that is very uncomfortable. And that very uncomfortable feeling helps you grow. That when you feel like shit and you screw something up, like when I've had bad podcasts, my podcast has always gotten better afterwards. When I've had bad stand-up sets, I've always gotten better after that because those bad sets motivate you. They get, they give you a perspective like, hey, here's some clear examples of where you fucked up. Yeah, what not to do. Yeah, don't, and don't look at these failures as like proof that you suck. Look at them as opportunities for growth. Look at them as opportunities to be motivated to do better. And Winston Churchill had a line about reading quotes, about how inspirational reading famous quotes were. Mm. And he says they motivate you from a number of different ways, including the idea that, you know, you think it's just you or you think that these people who did so well were so incredibly gifted or privileged from the get go. And when you realize, no, 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 they're more like me than I think that yeah. becomes inspirational, right? You telling your audience this is inspirational. You don't want to hear, go back to school, go do this work. Well, no. but, but if you hate your job, that is like nature telling you to try something different. And it's motivating because the motivation is you might not have to do that soul killing job anymore. Well, if you look at someone who's doing really well, like say if you focus on like Kevin Hart or someone like that, some very famous and successful comedian, all you see is him now flying around private jets, wearing a new pair of sneakers every day, driving around in Bentleys. You just see that. You don't see him being a young kid in Philadelphia, going to open mic nights, scratching and clawing. MC Hammer jokes. selling the, the tapes yeah. out of the hatchback. Yeah. All that stuff, man. There's a path. And you, you we, we think of people like, you see an old person walking down the street. You go, oh, that person's always been an old person. No, that was a baby. 
that was a baby that became a 90 year old man there's a there's a progression that you're not witness to you don't see it and that 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 takes place in everything it takes place in authors it takes place in comedians and musicians there is a starting point and then with time and focus and as long as you reevaluate and reassess and constantly objectively look at what you're doing and then pursue it with passion and focus you get better at things and, and you know what doing all those things ends up you know it's funny but your life experiences create who you are and all those things actually make you a more for I know I'm speak speaking to the choir here but but all those things make you a more formidable person so that eventually that next endeavor is is you're more prepared for and you're more formidable and and so you know you turn around and you say what was I like as a 23 year old intern compared to what I'm like now and I'm basically a different person yeah. and you're a different person because of all these life experiences I mean you go to a CENTCOM meeting with the big brat well you're more <laughs> formidable afterwards yeah, right for all, sure but if you don't put yourself in the position you know it's it's life is like coming up to the to the plate and taking a swing there are no guarantees you're gonna get a hit no guarantee and you might even look foolish swinging but there's no chance of it if you don't get in the batter's box right a hundred percent and one of the things that I've found over the last few years in particular um, I've done it in the past, but I did it because they were just goals that I was pursuing on the side as well as doing stand-up and all the other things that I do in my life. But I've found that things that are completely unrelated to my career that are difficult enhance what I do. Whether it's mm, yoga, I like that. yoga or running hills or uh, archery or uh, all these things well, that And I you've pursue. managed to incorporate them into yeah. what you do. Yeah, sort of. But that's just because my one of the things that I do is just talk about things that I'm interested right. in. But they make my my focus better because they're hard and because I'm not good at them. So like when I do yoga, I'm not good at yoga. So when I do it, it's hard. It's a oh, fucking it's struggle. Challenge. And forcing myself to get through that 90 minute class and try 100% with every pose enhances my stamina for thinking and, and approaching other things let's macro it out a little bit because I'm very interested in what you're saying so so here you and I are talking to the listeners uh, many of whom are already accomplished and well into their goals but if they're not they're listening to this and I'm thinking to myself okay if you're trying to design a society you know we had talked about revolution if, if, if too many people are, are the losers in the society you know, if you said to yourself what really matters in this society is making more Americans who are happier with their lives, more successful, doing what they want to do, in other words, empowering them to, to, to create, yeah. how different is that in terms of a setup from what our school system is designed to do now, which is a holdover to essentially make good factory workers, right? right? I mean, if you said to somebody, listen, this entire country is built for you to become a businessman with your own business, you start your own company. If you taught that in the schools from the get-go and you had workshops all, and, and everybody's gonna say, damn, we already do that in the schools, I already know. But I mean, if that was the entire goal of your education, to turn every student in that class into a small business person doing their own dreams someday, how would you do it differently than what you do now? Because to me, the biggest crime isn't that we have the kind of system we have, it's that we're not, training people on how to utilize it. I mean, we have all these opportunities there and it sounds like a cliche, but we're doing it. And as you go through it, you say to yourself, well, why can't more people do this? Well, who told them they could? And who said, you know, I mean, this is a little bit of a handholding, but I'm teaching this to my kids right now. Right? I'm telling them, listen, don't go do the soul killing job. Uh, work on this thing that you seem to be good at and that you love and let's work on it now. Yeah. Well, what if the, I mean, I guess what I'm saying is, could we be doing a better job here?